Well done, well done. You certainly made quick work of them, my dear. <laughs> oh my. Getting rather friendly there, aren't we? <laughs> but we've only just met, my dear. <laughs> oh well, no matter. We'll be intimately related soon enough. <laughs> so, my dear, do tell me. What drove you to kill a bar full of patrons minding their own business? Though today was rather a slow day, only consisting of five people, not including the bartender, who you so mercifully spared. That's still quite a few people for a human like yourself to vanquish. You must have had some reason for this. Unless you're just a psychopath who kills for fun, by which case, fair enough, do whatever you so wish, but... Something tells me it's more than that. I suspect the bartender has already alerted the authorities on what transpired here tonight, even though he so desperately promised he wouldn't tell a single soul. <laughs> Lucky for you, we're rather far out of town, and the local station is around two hours away. Drink. One of the many human vices I genuinely enjoy, actually. Oh, come now, my dear, do you really think I poisoned it? If I wanted you dead, I would have chosen a far more interesting manner to do away with you. Poisoning is just what humans do in order to avoid detection, and to separate themselves from their deeds. And I, for one, don't really care for avoiding detection or separating myself when it comes to these sorts of things. Taking a life is a violation of the natural order of things, and infects one's soul if the one doing the killing has a soul to begin with anyway. If you commit that big of a crime, you might as well enjoy it, no? But it doesn't seem to me that you enjoy killing these people. So tell me, what's the reason for this? <laughs> oh, don't worry, my dear, I'm not judging. Comparing my body count to yours, you'd be shaken to your very core. And when I say body count, I mean that in every sense of the term. <laughs> oh, come on now, there's no need to be so frightened. You're not... frightened. <laughs> but you are... aren't you? If it makes you feel better, the fiery glint in your eye would stop any human in their tracks, but... fortunately for me, I'm not human. You look like you can use this. <laughs> Not to worry. I promise. No one will be able to detect you by small traces of human evidence you may or may not leave behind. Drink. I promise you. You're going to need it for what I'm about to say next. I do have to admit... I wasn't completely telling the truth when I said we've only just met. We actually met quite a few years ago, but I doubt you remember too much of that. If I recall correctly, the reason why you're wasting your ways away, killing people you come across in bars, is for the sole purpose of revenge. <laughs> That's the whole reason why you left this dingy town. The reason you're standing in your tracks, stripping head to toe in the blood of your victim is because of all the hate and anger that you've allowed to fester and ferment in that decrepit soul of yours. No, I'm not criticizing, my dear. In fact, I understand completely. However, for the sake of my memory, why don't you recall the woeful tale as to why you started to kill? Hmm? It should make for an interesting bedtime story. <laughs> You want me to tell you how we initially met? <laughs> Fair enough, I suppose. Well, if I do recall correctly, this was just after the murder of your parents. Though the court of law deemed you as innocent to parenticide, the court of public opinion did not. Nevertheless, you attempted to live your life to the best of your ability. One night, you decided to sneak into a little speakeasy, and that's when you and I became acquainted. I remember your messy hair, your crestfallen expression, and the way you were holding your wine glass. 
like a complete amateur. I remember the raspiness in your voice as you recounted your tale to me, how you witnessed three armed men barge into your home and kill your parents right in front of you, and then proceeded to knock you out and place the knife in your hands. <laughs> a gut-wrenching tale to those who have a weak constitution, but one all too familiar to me. I remember sharing an evening together. You were all too happy to oblige, as if sleeping with a stranger could make you temporarily forget the unfairness and cruelty you suffer through for your entire adolescence and young adult life. <laughs> I still remember that frightened look you gave me when you reached pure blues, almost as if you realized what you were doing. You were so innocent back then, despite everything you've been through. But the world broke you, didn't it? It tore you apart piece by piece until it left you as nothing but a shell of your former self. <laughs> well, lucky for you, my dear. I enjoy playing around with broken people much more than whole ones. <laughs> <laughs> you see, broken people have nothing left to lose, except for their lives. And majority of the time, they don't even want that. Finding what makes them tick is far more challenging and entertaining as opposed to playing with whole people. Whole people tick when you threaten them. When you threaten to take away the things they love, like family, friends, loved ones, but broken ones. Broken ones are far more complicated. So, what makes you tick, my broken boy? Hmm? Is it knowing that when you finally satisfied your bloodlust, you can no longer return to human society. That you can never have the things that humans desperately work towards every second of every day of their lives. That no matter what you do, and how much you try to excuse it, you know there's absolutely nothing you can say to yourself that can justify your actions. Or, could it be... You're frightened that the people you're killing have no part in killing your parents. So all this time you've been killing innocent. Then underneath that grieving, pain-filled facade, you are exactly like the monsters that drive you to kill. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. Though I was expecting a different reaction, I'm not opposed to being held up by you, pressed against a wall. Make things all the more interesting. <laughs> Have you truly not felt a woman's touch for that long, that you unconsciously manhandle the first one you've seen? Though I wouldn't be surprised if you have killed a couple women here or there during the time we've been apart. You haven't. How noble of you. Well, before you get too comfortable... <laughs> I prefer being on top. But you remember that, don't you? 